Good morning, everybody. My name is John Gross. I'm product manager at the Light Vision. And I'm just going to touch this uh, subject that I've chosen um, a little bit because it's quite uh, a large one. So I'm just going to give you a few examples of how temperature can influence um, image quality in NIR or SWIR cameras. So first I'm going to give you a short introduction with the light vision, um, then some words about SWIR and in-gas sensors, and then I'll touch the two points um, which have a large influence on image quality, which is the dark current and the spectral sensitivity drift. And in the end, some words about our camera portfolio uh, in the SWIR range. So at the Light Vision, we um, design and manufacture high performance digital cameras. And we are proud to have one of the largest product ranges in the market for nearly all machine vision applications from high resolution to high sensitivity, from visible to uh, infrared <coughs> spectrum, and with a large choice of standard interfaces. Our headquarters is in Germany, in Stadtroda, but we have eight locations worldwide, three in Germany, um, one in Canada, two in the US, one in Singapore, and one in Shanghai. Actually, three of them are production locations, two in Germany, and one in Burnaby, Canada. Um, the offices in the US, two sales and support offices, also sales and support in Singapore and, and Shanghai, China. So we're truly a global player and we're working with uh, our distribution partners uh, in more than 30 countries. So some words about the shortwave infrared spectrum and infrared in general. Um, infrared is very large, so it reaches approximately from below one micrometer to up to 14 uh, micrometer and the SWIR part, the shortwave infrared, is only a small part of the infrared spectrum. However, if we compare it to the visible, it is still rather large. Um, and when we talk about SWIR, I mean, there is some confusion sometimes about the, uh, the name. So NIR is sometimes used uh, equivalent to SWIR. So with our cameras, when we talk about shortwave infrared, we usually mean the range between 900 and 1700. There's, of course, um, an extended range, which could go up to 2.2 micrometers. Our cameras so far do from 900 to 1700 uh, nanometers. Now some words about in-gas sensors, which we use in our SWIR cameras. Um, there are different beasts to the visible sensors, which we all uh, know, the silicon sensors. Um, they are based on an in-gas photodiode and a CMOS readout circuit. Um, the two are bonded together um, on a pixel by pixel basis, and that leads to that we have more irregularities and defects in those sensors, which we need to correct and which we need to um, take care about. Um, and in contrast to other infrared sensors, these infrared sensors, they're also quantum detectors. So they detect the photons and convert them to electrons. In contrast to the um, long wave infrared sensors, for example, the microbolometers, which work uh, in a different principle. So now I'm going to um, talk about one of the biggest um, topics which influence the, the, the image quality in in-gas cameras which is the dark current. Dark current is the image which flows even if there's no light present. Um, it produces a signal even though it's completely dark. And it's strongly temperature dependent. So the higher the temperature, the larger um, the dark current. And it is due mostly to thermal excitation of the electrons in the in the in-gas materials. Um, as a rule of thumb, we can say it doubles every nine degrees approximately. On the right, you can see a graph from uh, one of our cameras um, on a count per second basis and how it increases strongly with increasing sensor temperature. So how does this actually look like in, in, in actual uh, camera images? On the left, we see an image of, uh, with 20 degrees sensor temperature, one of our gold eye cameras, and on the right with 45 degrees sensor temperature. And at first, it, that doesn't seem to be such a big difference. Um, so we check the histogram of the two images. And if we look at uh, the histogram closely, if we go to the upper part of the histogram above 240 counts, 
we see on the on the left image there is not uh, not many pixels which have a signal there on the right however the one with the warmer uh, sensor temperature there's a lot of pixels um, at the at the higher end of the histogram and if we look very closely at the very end of the the histogram um, there is a peak and that means we have saturated uh, pixels uh, in the in the image on the right and we really don't want to have saturated pixels because that um, doesn't give us any information anymore if the pixel is uh, saturated so if we compare some uh, statistics we can see that we have uh, on the right image a higher minimum value so the black level has increased a little bit due to the dark current and we also have a higher average value of 13 pixel accounts of 13 counts excuse me um, and as I already mentioned on the right image we had many saturated pixels so that means um, the image quality or the black level and the noise is strongly influenced by dark current and so temperature control is, is very important in many applications. It always depends on applications but in hyperspectral applications usually it's very important to, to control the temperature accurately. And um, in all of our uh, in-gas cameras, we have three temperature sensors integrated, one inside the sensor itself, one on the sensor board and on the main board. And all the, this information can be read out at all times. Um, and we take measures to um, control this temperature in, in most of the cameras. Um, and the cameras also provide advanced tools to correct and minimize those effects which we don't uh, want to have. And the second topic which I would like to talk about, which influences image quality, is the spectral um, sensitivity drift. If we look at the sensitivity curves of three of our in-gas cameras, three different models, we can see that the, the sensitivity curve is quite flat from around 1000 to almost uh, 1000 or 1700. Um, so if we now take um, an LED, at 1740 nanometer center wavelength and have it have one uh, brightness and just change the temperature of the camera or of the sensor to be exact um, but don't change anything else only the temperature is changed the brightness stays the same nevertheless we see um, a large difference in black level it increases strongly um, with temperature and Okay, you can say, well, this is the dark current, but in this uh, measurement, the dark current has already been subtracted. So this is purely um, that because I'm at the very right edge of, uh, of the sensitivity curve, um, it, that the sensitivity changes with temperature. And so what we found in, in, in some experiments we did, um, by comparing the sensor at 25 degrees and the sensor at minus, minus 15 degrees is that the whole sensitivity curve shifts a little bit to the lower side with lower temperatures and it was about 25 nanometers um, when we have a temperature change of 40 degrees um, so what I can say is that temperature control is, is is very important especially when I'm operating at the very low or the very high end of the curve because uh, when I'm operating at the edges also a little drift in, in spectral sensitivity can give me a, a large change in, in signal so when you're very interested in the signal above 1700 nanometers for example your sensor temperature should not be too low otherwise the, the whole diagram has shifted um, to the lower part and you won't get any signal um, above 1700 and even though usually we say well you should keep the sensor at uh, the lowest possible temperature but that's not always true because even though I get higher dark current at higher temperatures your signal might still be better if you're um, operating at the, at the edges and are interested in the edges of the sensitivity curve Okay, now um, just a few words about our in-gas camera portfolio, which is often used in, in hyperspectral imaging. We have three focus areas. One is our high-speed cameras, the O33, which is a, a VGA in-gas camera. 
It has frame rates up to 301 uh, frames, low exposure times, and because of the small pixels, a large uh, spatial resolution. Then we have our HDR cameras, uh, we call them, with large pixels. Um, the VGA cameras, 25 micrometers, and the QVGA camera, the 008. And then we have a different, a larger housing, which also offers a fan for additional cooling, and uh, it has an evacuated sensor chamber, so there is no condensation on the sensor, even at low temperature. And because we can get lower temperature in this housing, we get usually less noise in those uh, cameras. All right, so I hope I could shed some light on, on influences on uh, uh, on temperature and image quality. So I'm happy to discuss further with you at our booth outside and thank you for your attention. Okay.